Hackers want your data, your precious, precious pictures of your puppy. They want them. I mean, why wouldn't they? Oh, he's so cute. Oh, that's a good boy. Oh. Now, more than ever, it's important to take the necessary steps to secure your devices and your data. So in this video, we're going to cover five ways to protect your computer from viruses and hackers. We'll start with password managers and antivirus, and then move to multi-factor authentication, VPNs, and backups, all crucial pieces of your overall network security strategy. So first on the list is passwords. Don't reuse your passwords on multiple websites. That's just a recipe for a bad time. You're gonna have a bad time. Also, don't leave them scribbled on a note on your desk or saved in plain text on your desktop of your computer and a little sticky that says secret, secret, keep out, hacker boy. You've gotta use a password manager to generate strong random credentials and save them in a password vault that only you have the keys to. There are many options when it comes to this, but this is what I recommend. So Bitwarden is an open source, a free password manager you can get for yourself. You can also use it for business as well. And it's what I use for my accounts. And then Keeper, which is, they have a personal uh, account, but you can also get an enterprise level security password manager as well. And I use this at my job. By using these services and creating a unique ID that you add to the password that only you know, you'll be keeping your accounts and your data safe. A final piece that goes along with password management is account auditing. So if you have a bunch of old accounts that you no longer use, they should either be completely secured or just deleted altogether. I prefer the latter. There are also services now to help with this and to also help you take your name off data lists, which can be exploited. One of the sites I've heard of is called Incogni. And so caveat, I've never tried these services myself. I've only seen other YouTubers promote them, but they're certainly worth a go if you care about personal privacy online. Antivirus, make sure it's turned on. If you're on Windows, you don't necessarily have to pay for antivirus. Windows Defender has gotten better and better as time has gone on. It's certainly much better than the Windows 7 days, Windows XP days, when they didn't even have anything like Windows Defender. Um, you can always pay if you want more protection and features on your machine. There's, there's antivirus like Bitdefender, which even includes a VPN and, and some, some better features. And Bitdefender was picked by PC Mag for 2023 as the best antivirus protection. Mac user like me, spoiler alert, they are still vulnerable to viruses and malware, but just not as much as Windows machines. So Apple actually has platform security built right into Mac OS, and it's definitely good. And I'll leave a link to the, the article that talks about it. But they use three layers of defense that prevent the launch and execution of malware. So in the App Store, when you download an app, it will double check. And if you download something from the Internet that it's suspicious of, it won't let you run it. Um, and there's another software that is built into Mac OS called Gatekeeper. And then Xprotect, which is the way that they remediate malware that has already executed on your machine. So there's multiple layers already built into the operating system. And not to mention, exploits and malware just aren't developed for Macs as much because there are way less users of Macs. Windows rules business always has, and an attacker is always going to pick the option that might result in a larger payoff, and so that being business. Username and password just doesn't cut it anymore these days. You need to have multi-factor authentication on all your accounts and devices. While the default is often to use SMS messages, it's best to use an authenticator as this is more secure and less likely to be spoofed. You can use a software application on your phone such as the Duo app or Microsoft Authenticator, or you can use an actual hardware, piece of hardware like Token2 or YubiKey. So I've used the Duo app, the Microsoft Authenticator app, the Google Authenticator app myself. Uh, I've never used any of the TOTP hardware such as YubiKey or Token2. To set up multi-factor authentication, you can first download the Duo mobile app on the App Store or the Google Play Store. And then you'll want to navigate to a website where you want to set up two-factor authentication. And usually there'll be a QR code that you can scan with the app and that will activate it with your account. And then usually you can find that in the privacy and security settings within your account, uh, depending on the website. This might be an obvious one, but if you're out in the world, say you're at a coffee shop doing some work or something like that, and you need to connect to public Wi-Fi, make sure that you check the name of the wireless SSID before connecting. You could be connecting to a rogue access point inadvertently, and that is bad news. Also, you should use a VPN to encrypt your traffic. It's downright scary how easily a passerby in a car or even somebody at the table next to you could access your machine if you connect to that network. 
So there are plenty of VPN services out there. I'm sure you've seen them across YouTube, things like NordVPN, ExpressVPN. There are also free options out there, but you should definitely be cautious with those. A lot of times they have lots of ads and they could contain a bunch of junk adware, so you wanna be careful. So in this example, I'm using Proton VPN. So I downloaded the application from their website and I installed it on Mac OS. You might have to go through some system security settings to allow uh, the actual app to run. Then you'll create an account and sign in. And once you're set up with the VPN device, you'll be able to choose the region you want to connect to. And the cool thing about a VPN is that, say you want to watch some, some fun anime or something from Japan, you can do that. Um, I'm using the free version at, this, at the moment, but you can upgrade. Otherwise, you'll just quickly connect to whatever the closest server that's available to you is, and that will route your traffic through a server that's located in that region. The nasty truth is that sometimes hardware can fail or just get ruined, and you don't want to lose all those precious puppy pictures due to the slip of the coffee cup, do you? Of course not, so back it up, dummy. When it comes to pictures and everyday documents, you're probably fine to just save to a backup drive. You should have really important data saved in at least two places. I would say have an external backup drive that's personal that you, you back up your data to, and then back up that data to a cloud location as well. A little bit of money per month goes a long way these days when it comes to storage, both physical and cloud. You can easily pick up a one or two terabyte external hard drive on Amazon. I've used Western Digital in the past, or you can go with a service like Carbonite, which gives you access to unlimited cloud storage, or you could do both and you could set it up so that you back up to the personal drive first and then back up to Carbonite as well. So do you feel more secure? I know I do. I feel like I'm wrapped up in a little warm blanket of internet safety. No, but in all reality, take some of these steps and start to implement them in your own computer and devices. And if you have any questions or suggestions, be sure to leave those in the comments down below. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, hit like and subscribe. It helps out the channel and I greatly appreciate it. Thanks so much for watching. Take care.